All right, before I do anything, for one, I want to say I'm so happy that Jesse Smollett has been acquitted of all charges. And I'm, I'm here for Empire, you know. So let's talk. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny and this is Empire Season 5 Episode 10. Um, the name of Episode 10 is My Fault is Past and Episode 11 is um, In Loving Virtue. Um, I'm sorry uh, um, that this video is late. I have been watching the show. It's just that things have been crazy, you know, on my end. So sorry that these, that these videos are late. But I, by, but by next week, I will be on time with everything. But, uh, but yeah, these past two episodes have been really good. And I really hope that, um, that they don't cancel Empire. And now that it has come out that Jesse, Jesse Smollett has been acquitted of all charges, I hope that things really work out, you know, more so, you know, for the show and as well as for him because... You know, we, we've been following, you know, this story about what happened and, you know, the situation was fishy. And I was just very careful to not completely just say, oh, F Jesse, because I really wanted the, the actual case to be proven whether he was guilty or not. And I'm glad that it's been proven that he's, you know, not guilty of all charges. And, you know, his um, record has been swiped clean. So... He can finally go on to live in his life, and I'm happy about that. So, hopefully, this actually will not only, you know, boost his career, but also will boost Empire as well. Because they said that um, episode 10, the ratings had fell about 35% while he was going through his trial. So, I'm hoping that now that it's been proven that he's that he's not guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm hope that you know things start to pick up for him as well as for the show. But yeah, let me uh, begin here. And I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine things that happen in both episodes because I don't want to make this a long video, even though I'm talking about two episodes. Okay, now it picks up where it left off after the fact that Kingsley has announced to everybody that he's Lucia's son. Now Cookie is literally feeling beside herself because it's like here, it, here she goes again She's getting another curveball about Lucius. But Lucius is like, look, I didn't know about him until recently. Like, you know, it's not like I knew about him and I hid him from you. But it's like Cookie is starting to really come to terms with the fact that everything that they've done to build that empire, they use blood, they use sweat, and they use crime. And that we've done a lot of wrong to a lot of people to get everything we have. And now it's coming back to collect. And it's coming back in the form of a man that calls you daddy. So Cookie is just so not here for it. And we're starting to see that there's starting to become some somewhat of a division between her and Lucius. Because now she's like, I don't see nothing. You know, well, not that I don't see nothing. But more of, more of the fact that I really don't know if I can sit in this because... It seems that once everything's good, something from either your past or something you've done comes back to bite us in the ass. And I just can't keep taking these hits anymore. So she's kind of going through it. Now, first person I'm going to talk about is um, Andre. Um, Andre is, you know, things are going well between him and Terry. Um, and... We see that her, um, you know, pretty much the mother of the um, of the young boy who he was um, mentoring in um, prison. You know, they have a good relationship, but the thing is, Terry does not know about Andre's evil side because Andre got a line in him just like Lucius. And in this episode, you definitely saw it. Actually, you saw it in both episodes, but in this episode, um, we see that. Uh, they find out that um, that the victims of Empire are suing Lucius and Becky for a hundred million dollars because remember Kingsley um, did all of this um, 
pretty much was selling information to the FBI, but he put it on Becky, and they found out there was a person who hacked both of their emails to make it look like that they were involved. And we know that this is Kingsley, but they actually find out, they actually um, reach out um, and to Jamal to say, maybe you need to talk to Kai and see if he can help us get to the bottom of this. So we already see that Kai and Jamal's relationship, yeah, it, it really is just on the outs because Kai wants Jamal, but he doesn't want what comes attached to him, meaning his family and also his pop career. And it, it just really kind of irritated me with Kai because I'm like, Kai, what the fuck you think he was getting into, bruh? Like, seriously. You knew this man was a pop star before you met him. You fell in love with him. You proposed to him. But you didn't really know what you was getting yourself into. And now you're just having this reaction because you want to go back to where things were before you knew his family and that he was kind of living in seclusion. And it was actually after... Um, so when he had asked Kai to help his father, oh, he flipped the fuck out and was like, oh, you really got some nerve to ask me to do anything, you know, for your criminal family and all this shit. And I'm like, oh, really? Really? Really, Kai? This is how we going? I'm like, oh, you, you're a real asshole because you're, you're very self-righteous. And this is one thing I've noticed about Kai. Kai gets to his moments where he just think it's, it's supposed to be his way or no way. And he has his convictions and all this shit. But I'm like, bruh, you got into a relationship with a guy who, who's a mainstream artist. And it's like you want Jamal to swallow who he is in order for, you, in order for him to live in the world that you want to live in. And that's fucked up. And they, and they kind of come to that resolution. But then Jamal checks him. He's like, look, I ain't asking you to do nothing about my family. I know my family done they dirt and all that. But Becky, she's innocent. I'm asking you to do this to help her. And he agrees and he goes to um, to Lucius and lets them know of the guy who, who was paid to hack their emails to make it look like they were the ones selling information to the FBI. And Kelly Patel has completely pulled out of Empire altogether. Like he don't want no parts of it because his stock went down because of this whole leak. So... We see that um, Kai goes on a meeting with Andre and Lucius to meet with the guy who was doing the hacking. Now, Kai's trying to reason with the guy, being very respectful, but the guy's being a straight-up asshole and talking big shit to them, saying, get the fuck out of here, I'm not telling you nothing. And then all of a sudden, Lucius goes to open a window, it's like, well, what were you saying? He's like, are you blind and deaf? I told you, get your asses out of here, I ain't telling you nothing. And then the next thing you know, we see that Lucius and Andre charge at the guy, literally force, literally kind of like tackle him out the window and literally start dangling the guy by his by his feet. And motherfucking Kai is flipping the fuck out. He's like, oh my God, no, stop, stop. I'm like, oh, yeah. You, you really getting the introduction of who the Lion family is. So you should have known what it was before you decided to give Jamal that ring. So... They pretty much intimidate the guy. The guy starts singing like a canary and everything. Tells everything that, yeah, Kingsley did this and Kingsley did that and all of that. And then all of a sudden, he tells um, Kai, welcome to the family, bruh. And Kai is just shook. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> that part had me dying. I was laughing like shit. I was like, wow. You know, like, Kai, now you getting a real taste of what the Lions family is. But then he was also letting you know, you fuck with my son, worse can happen to you. So, it, it was kind of like a, you know, a double flip when it came down to that situation. Then we see that Becky is finally out of jail. She's there with Jamal. And it's her that gets Jamal. Because he's right now, he's working on a song for Devon or whatever. Um... And she was like, no, you need to use that song for you. That's, 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 that's you all day, man. Like, look, I know you happy with your boo and all that, but bruh, you seem to me more like you've been putting yourself on the back burner to be about this, be about your marriage. You're Jamal lying. You need to 
get your get your adrenaline back. You know, the people need to hear from you. So she puts that spark back in, into Jamal. We see that he goes to this um, um, urban arts high school, you know, this um, creative arts school that he had went to. It's all the modern, and he goes there and performs, and it gives him that adrenaline back. Then we see later on, you know, um, you know, because um, Lucius tells um, Jamal, you know, tell Kai, thank you for helping us out, you know, you know, because what ended up happening was that once they got that information, he approached Kingsley and made Kingsley sign this paper and said that, look, this is what you're going to do. You can sign this um, thing where you admit to everything that you've done and it clears me and Becky all the way or I can take you outside and get a switch and I can give you the public ass whooping you looking for and I'm like you better say that shit um Kingsley and then Kingsley starts talking his shit like huh I took the most thing that you loved and I played with it and I toyed with it and made it something bigger than you ever could so that lets me know who's the better lion. And then he balls up the contract and throws and throws and throws it down. And we just and I'm just saying that it's all coming from a place of hurt. You know what they say, hurt people hurt people. And I think that's definitely the case with damn Kingsley. Kingsley's hurt and he is looking to destroy his father because in his mind his father was the one who did the wrong. But then again, what about your mother? Because your mother was the one who was living a reckless life. And you're trying to blame Lucius for getting her on drugs. We later come to find out she was actually doing drugs before she even met Lucius. Lucius just supplied the, just, you know, supplied the need. But then again, it goes back to what Ke well, um, Cookie was saying. That their past is coming back to bite them when they're supposed to be in the best moment of their lives. Or the best times of their lives. All of their bad demons are coming back to bite them. So, we saw all that go on. Now I'm going to talk about Hakeem. Hakeem has a little situation with Maya. Because remember, Maya's staying with um, Lucius and Cookie. And she's doing her pirouettes or whatever because she's a ballerina. He kind of turns off the music and was saying that you need to keep this down and all this shit. They go back and forth. And she was saying that, first of all, you know, if anything, you need to learn from 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 where I'm coming from because after all you know what you about to do another seventh remix of um drip drop I was like damn she's like you need to kind of open your mind and don't be afraid to try something new now if you excuse me I got work to do but then later on he brings this guy who um who I think is from I think Detroit but he's um just a natural street dancer but he knows ballet and hip-hop and he combined both of them and when he did his thing they were all blown away including including Maya she's like oh my god you're incredible because she was choreographing Hakeem's performance at um, Leviticus and within that whole scene you know we see that there's some sparks going on between Maya and Hakeem and then during that performance, we saw a little moment between Hakeem and Maya, and that damn Tiana was looking some kind of way. I'm like, but boo-boo, he ain't your man no more, remember? You know, <laughs> so Tiana felt some kind of way, because it's like, yeah, Hakeem done moved on, because we know Hakeem ain't got, ain't got no problems bagging a chick. He bagged so many of them. He used to it. When one fall off, he got another one to take her spot. So, yeah, he got his sights on Maya. And I think Maya's kind of feeling him, too. Because she was impressed that he brought that guy. And he even kind of threw the thing back at her. Don't be afraid to try something new. So, that was interesting. <laughs> so... So, then, um, later on... We finally see Kai and um, Jamal meet up, and he said that yeah, he my dad told me of what you did, and he wants me to tell you thank you for what you've done, and he's very grateful. But then he's then he tells him, oh, did um, your father also tell you what happened about how they dangled the guy out the window and all this shit? And he was like, look, I have been uh, I have been threatened by 
you know, by many different adversaries. I've been threatened by kings, you know, by, you know, different, you know, political, 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 um, social, socialist groups and stuff like that. Violence doesn't, doesn't scare me, but your family does. And I'm like, wow. So all this is coming out. And he's like, man, why can't we just go back to London? We were so happy there. Why do we have to come here? Why do I have to be a part of this? Like, just come back with me. And Jamal, now that he has gotten this new experience and he's now coming into himself, he was like, look, I see where you, I see, I, I understand where you, where you're coming from with this. But at the end of the day, I am this. I'm a lion. And I'm not going to keep apologizing for it. So he pretty much took back the engagement ring and gave it back to Kai and told Kai he can go back to London. But we definitely see that it's going to tear. It, it tears um, Jamal apart because here it is. He gave up, you know, probably one of the best guys he's met in a long time. But I just knew that this shit wasn't going to work out because, you know, Kai obviously wanted something out of the marriage that <clears throat> that Jamal wasn't going to be able to provide. So, and the fact that it was more like Kai kind of created this fantasy with Jamal but didn't want to live in the reality of Jamal and what Jamal represented. But then again, I'm like, you need to keep your eyes open with that one, Jamal, because now that he know information about your father, he could do a damn, um, he, he could do an, um, an expose on the Empire family. <coughs> so now that he done been now that he been dumped, you know, jilted lovers do the unthinkable. So I'm saying keep your eye on that one. And then we see that, you know, Cookie, you know, she she actually makes peace with Candace. Cause we know um earlier in the season, you know, she found out that Candace was getting beat up by her son and Cookie called the police and actually had her son committed. And what she did is that she decides to, you know, tell Lucius about that personal property that Cookie had. So as soon as she saw Candace, she was just like, man, fuck this bitch. Get this bitch out of my house. I don't got nothing to say to her ass. <clears throat> but they came to terms with things. And then they also bring Carol, you know. Because, you know, Carol a good old, is the good old get high junkie sister. And she crazy as shit. So they talking and... They, they they discussing, you know, Lucius and um, Tracy's relationship. And Carol and Mrs. She knew her. She was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to call her White Tracy. And we called her that because so that the Black Tracy wouldn't get mad. Like, I was like, damn. So she used to get high with, um, with White Tracy. So this sparks um, um, Cookie to go visit, um, um, you know, Tracy in the hospital. And we just see that Tracy got all of this damn venom and all of this damn anger built up. And she's like, hi, I'm Cookie Lion. And she's like, I know who you are. I'm like, really, bitch? Are you mad because Cookie got the life and all you got was the crack in the dick? So they start talking, going back and forth. And, and pretty much she was saying that, yeah, when Cookie met Lucius... It's funny because that when that happened, I was pregnant. And, you know, they go back and forth talking about the whole situation. And Cookie starts to let her ass know, like, first of all, Boo Boo, yeah, you having a child, you know, that, you know, nobody can predict when they have a kid. But you put in that, but you put in that, 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 um, that glass piece into your mouth to get high, that was a choice, honey. You chose to do that and you need to own your own shit. And then she's like, I lost everything. And she was like, bitch, I lost everything. I lost my husband. I lost my children. I did 17 years in jail while your ass was free. So what have you really lost, boo-boo? And everything you lost is because of your own doing. So I'm like, Cookie was giving her some serious life lessons. Like, bitch, you sitting around here mad at everybody. You created the situation. <clears throat> so we saw that go down. And then we, we finally see that, um, yeah, so we saw that go down and, and, you know, she later on tells Lucius that she wanted to go see it because she says she needs to really, um, 
she really needs to reconcile all this stuff because so much is going on and so much has happened. So um, we also see, um, let's see here. So then we also see that, you know, while um, after the, after the, the um, after Hakeem's performance at Leviticus, Andre's driving with Terry, and all of a sudden his nose starts bleeding. So he's having like some serious health issues, but he's not trying to let her know about it. And the doctor's calling, you know, like like late hours in the night, saying that they want to see him, and he's kind of like blowing it off. So I'm thinking it may be Andre that may be in that coffin, but we have to keep watching to find out if that's true or not. Oh yes, and then um, so then we see that finally, um, what ends up happening is that after everything, everything is said and done, and they've been cleared, they now got Empire back, and Giselle is a joint partner, is a joint owner in Empire with with Lucius and Cookie, and that the two of them will remain, you know, co CEOs of the of the company. So now. They're in the process of rebuilding things. And then we get a damn scene between um, Kingsley and Lucius. This damn Kingsley is such a is such a computer whiz. This motherfucker developed a new app where he got a hold of all of Lucius's masters and literally started um, erasing them one by one. And then it comes out more. He's blaming Lucius for his mother being on crack and you, my mother lost custody of me because of you and all of this and you know you never once ever wanted to acknowledge me as your son and all this shit and then they start having this really tearful moment to the point where it damn near moved me to tears because he was like do you think if I knew about you I would have left you out there without a father you're my son and I do love you like you're my seed and then we see that damn Kingsley starts to tear up and shit. I'm like, that's what it is. You want your dad's affection. And you were mad that, you know, that um, Andre, Jamal, and Hakeem got their father. But you never got that. Because, you know, Kingsley is the eldest out of all of them. And we actually started to see that he just decides to walk out. But I don't think that's the end of Kingsley, though. But he got to him. Because he's actually a hurt little boy and he's made it his life's work to destroy his father and destroy everything he built. Which is crazy as hell. But yeah, so we, so definitely that's what went on in the first episode of Empire. And if I missed anything, put it down in the comments. So now I'm going to talk about the second episode. You know, we see that Jamal is still going through it after him and Kai split up. And he's getting flashbacks of their relationship. Because they did have a good relationship when it was good. But yet, it wasn't equally yoked because they both wanted different things. Jamal wasn't going to give up his family completely for Kai. And that was something that Kai couldn't deal with, obviously. So then... We see that Cookie is still kind of going through it because now they got Empire back and she's like, you know, I'm just sick and tired of being blindsided. It's like everything from your past is hitting me like a grenade and all of that. <coughs> and, she, and she's saying that, look, we got to make things right now because we have literally benefited off of others' pain and we need to make this right. And then we see that Jamal has a has a moment with Cookie. He talks about they talk about Kai, and she's saying that look, he'll be back, you know, you know, and you know, both Jamal and Cookie are in the same state of mind where they're talking about that they're gonna um that that they want to do things differently this time around with Empire. Um, then we see that Andre and Terry have a moment. They talk about Quincy, you know, um, 
and you know she gets him a gift or whatever that they that they both got for him and it was a briefcase and and we also see that Terry's really into church and we know that that damn Andre he has issues with God and issues with the church and all of that so it's like they're from totally two different worlds but right now Terry he's not showing Terry that sinister side and he's trying to tell her to stop worrying because the doctor keeps calling. <coughs> so then we actually uh, see that they end up having um, they end up having like this um, meeting or whatever. They finally get Empire back. They got Giselle who is pretty much um, part owner along with Cookie and Lucius. <clears throat> you know, that the two of them would be co-CEOs. Um, Giselle's going to be the COO. Um, and then um, Andre is going to be the CFO. And um, Jamal becomes the chairman of the music department. And Hakeem is the creative director. And... Becky kept, keeps her position as the vice president of A&R. So everything is back to running. But the problem is that the company is now cash poor. Because you remember Eddie? You know, when Eddie was at the helm of Empire, he was embezzling money from the company and was sending it to an offshore account in Panama. And they can't even get access to it. So I'm like, that damn Eddie still is haunting them from the grave. So it's like... All the shit, just like what Cookie's been saying, all the bad things are now coming to play right now. So, they make it a mission to go get that money out of Panama because, you know, Kelly Patel has pulled his stock out of Empire. So, you know, Kelly Patel don't want nothing to do with Empire now. So, they're pretty much now left with this company, but the company's cash poor, so they now gotta figure out ways to, um... To, um... They got to figure out ways to, to be creative and to get things back up and running again. And then after their meeting, that damn Treasure. You remember Treasure was the artist that they found when she was working at the jail where when um, Andre was locked up. And they signed her to um, Lions Family Management. But then she ditched them to go sign with Empire. You know, where Kingsley was at the helm. So she's kind of sitting down like, oh, can do you guys have a minute? You know, she's like, well, you were asking for a lot after you just said that it was cute you performing in our living room and shit. And she was like, but I didn't leave because it was nothing personal. It was business. And she was like, okay, so I've decided to drag your ass by your feet out into the damn street where you belong. You see how personal is getting now? I was like, oh shit, Cookie. I was so here for that shit. And Lucius pretty much says, okay, you ain't making the company no money, so... This is what the deal is. You need to get you a hit or your ass is done. And then they said, and she's and she's like, and it's like, yeah, and you still sitting here. Come on, come on. Yeah, let's get the money. Let's go, let's go. I was like, yes, I was glad they got her ass back because she really did them dirty. And they got you away from that pimp ass manager you had who was pretty much going to be beating your ass and taking your money. You know, Lucius handled his ass, got you free of him, and then you going to turn on them when you should have stuck by them. So, it's just funny how tables turn, and now you trying to kiss up to them and shit, and they weren't having it. Then, we get this situation with Devon. See, remember, Devon was signed to, um, to Lions Family Management, but they also signed him to a label so they can get out his single. But right now, the label ain't doing nothing with them. They haven't even put, um, they, they're not, then they're not only not putting out his music, but they won't even let him work with Empire Artists. Because he says that me collaborating with Empire Artists can actually help me. So when I do my debut album, I at least have somewhat of a fan base there that I can draw from. But he's not even letting, they're not even letting him, you know, you know, work with anybody. So he's literally just on the label sitting. And, you know, Andre says he'll get to the bottom of it. So they go to meet with Samson, who's the head of the label, 
and we saw him earlier in the season when he was, you know, when he got, when Lucius got him to sign Devon. But now, this motherfucker is really feeling himself and questioning Devon's loyalty and shit. Then he has this um, samurai figurine, you know, and he says, it reflects my warrior spirit. And Andre puts up some money and asks him, like, look, we want to actually do some collaborations with some of the Empire artists. This could actually help him and can help you in the long run. So won't you let us use Devon for a while, get him out there, and then we can do his debut album through you. But then he was like, well, the thing is, if he were to do stuff with you, it would make our label look like Sloppy Seconds. So, so he just kind of like blew him off. Like, you know, I'm not doing it. And you, we see that Devon is frustrated because he's trying to make a name for himself. But then he's saying that, look, I know I got the, the future of R&B sitting right in front of me and I ain't letting him go. But yet you're not doing anything with him either, you bastard. So Andre wasn't here for the shit. So they left, but then Andre came back later on. And when Andre came back, Andre came back as a motherfucking lion. Because he starts talking his shit, you know, talking about some like, what, did prison rot in your brain? I told you that I'm not letting him go and all this shit. So he said, okay, we're going to test this theory, you know. Okay, since you want to come at me like this. So he grabs the damn sword off the samurai and checks, oh boy, was like, sit your ass down. And then he starts destroying part of the samurai and everything. He's flipping the fuck out. He's like, oh my god, I cannot believe you being the Ivy League son that you're starting to follow in your, in your father's thuggish footsteps. And he was like, well, my father actually goes out of his way for his artists. Can you say the same? And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? He's like... Oh, I know about how you be using your your um your artist expense accounts for your personal liaisons. Uh huh. Your call girls and your call boys. I was in here dying. I'm like, yo. And he was like, that's not true. She's like, oh, not according to your ex-wife because I dropped some money at your at your ex-wife. It's funny how much a scorned woman will sing once you start giving her some money. So his ex-wife, and all of a sudden you got her to back down. So I'm like, oh, that shit's true. Yeah, you do be using your artist's money to pay for ass. <laughs> Male and female. So I'm like, oh, damn. Motherfucker was grimy as shit. So he's still fucking up the damn little samurai figurine, which is like his pride and joy. Then all of a sudden he's like, okay, fine, fine, fine. You can use Devon. And he was like, I asked you that this morning. You remember how nice I was when I came in here and asked you? Now I want his whole damn contract. Sign the shit. Sign it. Sign it. And he ends up signing. He's like, nice doing business with you, Samson. Bitch. I was like, oh, that damn Andre is literally become exactly how Lucius was in season one. We are getting more of that evil, that evil um, dragon from him than, than we're getting from Lucius, actually. Lucius still with the bullshit. But Lucius is kind of mellowed down, whereas Andre, Andre is steam ahead, like kill or be killed, and he is like he's literally living that shit. So we saw that go down, and that shit was like, wow, that's crazy. Then um, we see that um, Jamal is actually working on a song for Tiana, and you know they gotta get Tiana back out there. But then we see later on. That little damn bitch treasure starts going up to Jamal, trying to stroke Jamal to give her to get to get her to be on the song and all that. And she even plays this little demo where she's singing Jamal's song, and she kind of adds her lyric to it. And he sees how much of a dy dynamic vocalist she is. But then she comes up in there shading Tiana, talking about some, oh yeah, I'm available. I ain't got mommy duties and stuff like that to worry about. I ain't got to worry about daycares and babysitters. And, she, and he was like, yo, slow your roll. That's 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 my family. You know, I'm like, yeah, bitch, you forget she has children. She has a child with Hakeem, you know. You know, like, bitch, you stupid as fuck. And it just goes to show you she thirsty. And she know damn well if she don't get a hit, she going to be off the label. So now she thirsty and she doing all she can to get on. But... You know, later on, Tiana finds out about it because we see that 
Giselle and Becky make a good damn team because the two of them are a mess. They figured out, okay, what's a better way to really get our artists out there? Fashion Week. So they get all the artists that appear on Fashion Week, and we see there's literally a duel that goes down between Treasure and Tiana on the red carpet. And they kind of get into it or whatever because they both shading each other down. Becky and Giselle bring the two of them in and get to the bottom of it. And they said that $100,000 is what we got to pay to clean up all that bullshit that went down um, at the, on, the, on the damn red carpet. Because you two bitches didn't know how to hold your shit. But we ain't having this. Because like, at the end of the day, both of y'all need this. You know, you need it as well as you. So, you know, Jamal has decided to make it a duet and put both of y'all on it. And they both saying, oh, I ain't singing with this bitch. I ain't singing with her either. Like, bleh, I can actually sing. And like, they just started going back and forth. Jamal kind of shut it down. Like, first of all, you know, Treasure, you're new. And Tiana is the princess of Empire. So it will benefit you being on a song with Tiana. And, and you know, Treasure, let's be real. You ain't got no hits. So you need this more than anything. And then he says, Tiana, you never been on a song with another female vocalist, so this is a chance for you to to um to bond. And they pretty much says that look, this is gonna happen. So either you girls play nice or it'll it'll be whoop whoop or it'll be done for the both of your asses. So get your little mean asses out of here and get to work. And I was just so here for that shit. But yeah, y'all gotta watch Giselle's ass cause cause Giselle is definitely about Giselle. And that's one thing y'all need. They don't. They all need to understand. But then we see that they have like a little meeting about getting the money back from Panama. And we see that Thurston is kind of pulled into the situation by Lucius, where Lucius tells him to go find Damian Cross. Y'all remember Damian Cross when they was doing that little poker game or whatever? You know, him and Damian kind of, you know, they kind of connected. And when that whole thing went down, he helped Damian escape. But then Damien also got that real painting of Lucius and Cookie that was given to um, Cookie as a wedding um, present. He got the original. But they still don't know that shit because he's making a play for Cookie and he's making it obvious because when they all met for the, you know, all together at Empire, he was kind of playing it off like he didn't remember Cookie or whatever. But Cookie was like, I remember you. You know, and all of that. But then later on, they decide... Because um, what happened was that Giselle tried to get the money out of Panama, but she wasn't able to get access to it. And Lucius can't get away. So Cookie decides to go with Damien Cross down to Panama to get the money. And we see that, yeah, they were, he was still flirting with Cookie back and forth. And he kind of gives her... Shows her the um, the cigarette... Um, the, the, um, the matches of the hotel where they first met. So she's like, oh, I knew I wasn't tripping. But then she kind of lets me know that, look, I'm a married woman. I'm here to get this money, and that's it. And we see that what ends up happening is that uh, they meet with the guy. The guy is very old school. He thinks like a woman's place is to be quiet and not to speak. But we know that ain't Cookie. So Cookie goes to the table. They sit down, and they talk. And, oh, boy, they they speak, and then they're, they're pretty much speaking in... Um, in in um you know in his in his um native tongue, um and they're both pretty much speaking Spanish amongst each other, and he kind of lets them know that look if you don't do this I'll make sure all of my clients pull pull out of your operation and all that shit so you won't get no more funding unless you help this woman get what she needs, but then she well then Cookie comes to the table and she negotiates, and pretty much says that look I need you know I'll let you get about ten percent. And, you know, we can get our money back and we can start building our thing because she lets it be known that, look, this money was stolen from us. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to play this game with you because, you know, this, we were robbed. You know, this was our money anyway. We'll cut you in on it because we want to we want we're thanking you for helping us get access to it. But that's all you getting. And he agrees, you know, and we see that him and. You know, old girl, that him and um, D that Damien and Cookie start dancing or whatever. But then she goes back to her room to see a single rose. Lucius then brought his ass to damn Panama. And 
I'm like, see, Lucius already knew he can't trust Damien. He already got that feeling. And then we later on find out that Damien, that um, Thurston used to work for Damien Cross. And now he's being told by the FBI that he need to turn one of them over. Either Lucius or Damien Cross. So I'm like, damn. So Luce, so damn Thurston in the middle of the bullshit. And I'm like, wow. Because when he was trying to tell Dan tell um, um Thurston to set up the meeting, Thurston was very hesitant. But he's like, well, well, as my employee, I'm letting you know, set up a meeting with Damien Cross. It's about time he paid me back. Because I helped his ass when... You know, in that situation, now it's time for him to help me. Because I know he got connections over there. He can make something happen, which they did. But we didn't know that he used to work for Damian Cross. And now the FBI is on to him. And he got to give somebody up. And then we also see um, Maya's old mean ass. Um, she's trying to move up in the company, but Cookie was like, boo-boo, you just got here. You need to crawl before you walk. And there's a lot you need to learn about the music industry. So, we see she's sitting there with Portia, and she's telling Portia all of her ideas and all that. But Portia's like, look, girl, just slow your road. You're going to get there, but you need to, you need to pay your dues first, you know. You need to, you know, you know, you got to play to win. I mean, hey, this is how, this is how, um, I moved up in the game. And she was like, well, if I really want to judge it by you, I don't think that's a fair comparison. I mean, because after all, I didn't hear your name when they were announcing new titles for the company. I'm like, oh, Maya's a little bitch. She's a spoiled, entitled bitch. And it's coming out more and more. And Maya going to end up getting her ass beat sooner, sooner or later. Because Maya don't know how to control her mouth. So then we see that Portia actually signs... Um, Blake back to Empire. They rap, rapping and spitting. And then all of a sudden Maya's like, oh really? So you just take my idea? She's like, yeah, I took it. I mean, I mean, after all, you know, it was a good idea. So I jumped on it. But don't worry, you're going to get yours. And she's like, but she's like, but, but you was it's like, oh no, I was supposed to stay in my place, right? So that's what I did. I made my move. And you know, don't you want to stay and listen to it? She's like, oh, no, I'll just go find some more ideas for you to steal. She's like, okay, girl, bring it over. <laughs> like, I was so here for Portia because Maya was pissing me off, and I was glad how Portia flipped it on her ass. That was cute. Oh, yeah, but then another scene that really got me, too, was that, you know, Thurst Thurston been trying to get Lucius to deal with the situation with his mother because his mother is getting out of control at that um at that um mental facility and they and plus he owed back money so he went there to pay the money and then we saw dag on you know you know lucia's mother she is giving bride of frankenstein teas she talking shit to everybody and she pretty much said that you know what? You a dirty motherfucker for putting me in this place. You know, and and here it is. You know. Now I feel. Now I know what is now. Now you know what it's like to have a child that you wish you would have prevented them from taking their first breath. So she knew about about damn Kingsley, and he was like, "How do you know about him?" She says, "He came by to see me." Yeah, uh huh. And I see that same evil look in his eye that I see in yours. And and she was like, so what happened when you told Chocolate Chip? How long it took her to take her sassy ass out the door? Like she was throwing bad shit at him. And and he was like, Cookie didn't leave me. And she's like, oh, she will. Because that evil is in you. It's always been in you. And then he kind of thought about it and was like, well, maybe this evil is in me because I never got the love and the affection I needed from my own mother. You know, but I'm trying to change and be a better person. And I'm trying to do things right. And she was like, boy, please, that evil is right there. It ain't going nowhere. And he was like, and neither were you. And walked the fuck out. I was like, wow. I swear, Leslie Uggum, shout out to her. 
phenomenal actress. She is playing that damn part because she was talking cash shit and was letting him know that he ain't shit and he's always going to be evil and you can't do nothing with it because that evil's always there no matter what. But in all honesty, mom, that's an evil that you planted. You made him like that. You know, where it was kind of him against the world. So that's why he became an evil bastard. So. We see that go on. But then also. After Lucius. And you know meets up with Cookie in Panama. And they kind of get it in. Or whatever. He's trying to profess his love for Cookie. But Cookie. We can see Cookie right now is divided. You know because she's also liking the attention she's getting from Damien. But she still does love Lucius. But she's just getting tired of always being blindsided by something. She's getting tired of, you know, everything that they build constantly coming back to bite them. So, she's still torn when it comes down to Lucius. But, I can kind of see that, yeah, she kind of thinking about Damien too. So, we just got to keep our eyes on that. Because Damien pretty much told her that, look, I'm not going to chase you, Cookie. But when everything is all said and done, you're going to be running back to me. I'll be, and I'll be here waiting to pick you up, too. So I'm like, see, Damien had already made a play, and he's just as smooth as Lucius, which makes him dangerous and makes him sinister. So we got to see how this is going to play out. But that's what I have, everybody. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Empire. So until next time, everybody, take care.